Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Simone. And um, today I just wanted to start talking about the Mucosite, Mucosite Healing System because um, you've probably heard me mention it a lot on this channel or mention certain concepts related to what he's talking about in this book. And um, basically the main reason why I started this channel um, at this time was because I really wanted to document my transition. And um, even though I'm doing a long juice fast pretty like early in my conscious transition, I've actually been transitioning for a long time without knowing it <laughs> um, for like 12 years. You know, I would consider when I started transitioning around that time when I was 23, I'm 35 now. And um, I've had like a long <laughs> storied journey to um, just trying to be well, just trying to feel well, just trying to feel better and just trying to heal myself, you know? Um, I used to be very, very ill back when I was 23. And uh, so was Arnold Aired around that same age, actually. Um, I'm gonna do a video talking specifically about him, like who he was and his journey. In this video, I kind of just wanted to give a taste of like how you could just get started with this. Because <laughs> um, the reason why I thought about making this video first is like a way to talk about this is that when I first read this book, there was one person um, that I immediately thought about. My friend Izzy, if you're watching. Hi, Izzy. <laughs> um, and it was funny because I was like, you have to read the book, you know, it's so amazing. And she's like, can you just tell me what to do? Because <laughs> I don't want to read it right now. Or like, I can't remember what she said, but she was just like, can you just basically give me the cliff notes of like how to get started? And because I know how she already eats and everything, I just told her like, you know what? Just focus on eating fruit and then eating salads. <laughs> like, just keep it real simple, you know? I'm like, that's how I'm going to be eating. Just like, based on what I've already done, you know, going vegan, plant-based. I've already, already like eliminated a lot of the pus-forming foods my friend had too. So like, it was just not that hard to just be like yeah just like start there and then start doing these enemas <laughs> um and she started doing them before i even got to do it because like i was traveling at the time <laughs> um so um that was like my advice to her at the time i can't remember exactly what else i said but i think i just kind of boiled it down to like just focusing on fruit to try to eat like one or two types of fruit at a time um and then just eat that first before eating vegetables or fruit and then uh sorry eating vegetables and to try to just have like these uh big salads you know and um i think that might be what i said to focus on like whatever else you want to eat just eat it after the salad maybe um i think that's like how i described it so um i thought i could maybe do a little better now that i have more experience and more understanding of the system because that was like after just reading it basically once <laughs> and not even having a lot of experiment experience with it with myself um experience with it myself so in this video i just kind of wanted to give a taste of like what you could start trying out if you haven't gotten to read the book yet but you're curious about it especially if you're drawn to doing like a long juice fast like getting a sense of like whether or not a juice fast might actually be right for you at this time i thought this video might be helpful um so the first thing i would say is to look at what whatever it is you're eating now and what i'll do is kind of just explain the different categories um that foods fall into and why certain foods are a problem and other ones aren't um or they might not my they're not a problem they might feel like it <laughs> so we'll get to that when we get to fruit so <clears throat> foods fall into different categories um the easy way to understand what a pus forming food is is that it's an animal product so if it came from an animal that means it's dead it's decaying already um <clears throat> And what happens is when you ingest it is that your body turns it into pus through the digestion process. Um, it might be able to eliminate a little bit of it, but it's gonna leave behind this residue that turns into pus in your body that leads to like infection, things like that. Um, so not good. Uh, so animal products are any sort of meat, dairy, fish, eggs, all that stuff. If it came from an animal, it's pus forming. Uh, that's an easy way to understand pus forming foods. Um, the other category, the third, second category is mucus forming foods. So the easy way to understand like what a mucus forming food is, is if it has a lot of protein or if it has a lot of fat in it. And again, animal products, that's basically all they are. They have like no carbohydrates in them. They're literally just made of protein and fat and also a lot of other stuff like parasites and viruses and pathogens. <laughs> um, but, uh, so if you're like plant-based already, um, you're probably already eating a lot of mucus forming foods. And if you eat like the standard American diet, you're definitely eating a lot of both pus forming and mucus forming foods. Uh, so mucus forming foods is easy to understand because um, it yeah, has a lot of mucus, has a lot of protein, has a lot of fat. Um, so these are things that are like 
the starchy um, carbs, the starchy plant-based foods. So these would be like beans, rice, uh, grains, lentils, um, potatoes, um, the starchier vegetables, like root vegetables. Um, although the starches of them is definitely the, the potato. But there's other ones too, like cassava, like all those kinds of things are very, they're very mucus forming. Um, so I think that's like, that covers the mucus forming foods. Um, but also fatty fruits, so something like durian or um, uh, avocados. These are very, very fatty, um, you know, uh, fruits. They're fruit, technically, but they are more fat than sugar or carbohydrates. So those would be considered mucus forming. They leave behind like a mucus, um, you know, residue in your body that doesn't get fully eliminated. And that can accumulate, you know, around your organs can accumulate as like fat, extra tissues in your body. Um, it can just cause a lot of problems the same way that pus does in the body. Um, cause pus is basically just a very concentrated form of mucus, but it also has the extra layer of coming from a dead decaying flesh and animal. So it's just like not great. Um, <laughs> and, um, <clears throat> so that, that's like the pus forming foods and the mucus forming foods. And then you also have the acid forming stimulants. So these are things like coffee, tea, drugs, spices, anything stimulating, anything, um, that, um, is not a fruit or non starchy vegetable that doesn't necessarily cause mucus or pus in the body, but it does leave behind this like acid residue that builds up, you know? So any kind of drugs, anything that's like foreign to the body in any sort of way that is not like a fruit or a green leafy vegetable or an herb or something like that, which herbs would count in that category of like non starchy vegetables. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, anything not in that category, but also not pus forming or not mucus forming would be considered like an acid forming stimulant. Um, the other thing to know about pus forming foods and mucus forming foods is that they're also very acid forming in the body. Um, they're acidic, you know, so there are some things that just cause acid and not the mucus and pus and some things that also cause mucus and also cause pus, but they're all acidic. Um, they all kind of contribute to your body being in a more acidic state than an alkaline state. So... Um, those are the foods that in this diet, you know, you're systematically moving away from because the problem with those foods, which is probably the majority of what you're eating if you're coming, you know, to this um, journey, <laughs> is that um, those foods ca um, cause constipation or those substances cause constipation. And the foundation of all disease in the body, all symptoms you're experiencing, any sort of Anything that gets you out of a state of homeostasis, which you've probably never been in your whole life. None of us pr probably have been in a, a total state of homeostasis. But all those things um, are constipating. They're either constipating you in your colon, which is very important to like keep that clear and that moving. Um, and uh, yeah, there's constipation in that way. There's also constipation of your cells and your tissues. And all these different substances that I just mentioned um, cause constipation in the body. They don't get fully eliminated unless you're eating maybe some mucus forming foods um, and acid forming foods in conjunction with something that can help it eliminate, but it's not never, it's never gonna be like maybe a perfect elimination, but it can get you closer. And that's what, you know, you talked about in this book is how to combine uh, foods and combine certain menus and meals to be able to systematically kind of transition away from the worst foods, you know, towards like the healthiest foods, the foods that are actually gonna be dissolving waste instead of leaving behind waste. So, um, and leaving behind the waste is like the constipation that he talks about. That's why it's an issue. You're just basically inundated with all this waste, all this stuff that's not supposed to be in your system. It's mucking up the works. And um, when the obstruction in your body gets more so, it gets like so great and so intense that um, your body can't eliminate it, um, that's when death occurs. And uh, he talks about what life is, like how life-giving foods or life-giving things in life you know contribute to being alive and what certain things actually contribute to you being dead um <clears throat> so that's kind of how intense this book gets but that's like in very simple terms like how things work so your body's always going to be trying to heal you it's always going to be trying to keep you alive that's why people can survive the crazy things they do to their body for so long <laughs> and why the majority of us now that there have been things like kind of stimulate us and prop us up for a long time can live into like what we consider to be old age but uh, I don't think 80, 90 is old age, you know? Like, I don't think it's natural that people should be deteriorating also 20, 30 years before they reach their final age. 
Um, none of that ever seemed normal to me and like it feels extremely abnormal to me now after reading this book when it just seems like all that is very optional and not a guarantee. Um, so yeah. And then the foods I want to talk about that are mucusless, meaning that they're not going to leave behind any sort of um, residue in your body. These are fruits and green leafy vegetables. I should also mention nuts are mucus forming. He mentions it kind of in two categories in the book because um, they're very like low mucus forming if you eat them the right way. Like if you eat, if you eat nuts with um, like dried fruit, for example, it's going to eliminate a bit better than if you just eat them by themselves. But they're very fatty and they're high in protein. So they are in the mucus forming category, but they're good for the transition if you need them. And um, <clears throat> Yeah, so when we talk about the mucus-less foods, we're talking about fruits and non-starchy vegetables. Um, so fruits are mucus-less. They also dissolve waste um, in the body. So if you have like a lot of acidic waste, it's going to be able to dissolve that chemically. Um, it can also like mechanically dissolve waste as well to some degree. And then you have the non-starchy vegetables that are really helpful in the transition diet because and um, the mucus free veg vegetables and um, all that, that really helps mechanically shift waste out of your body. So whether you're having a mucus free um, fruit or vegetable raw or cooked, it has that effect. The most dissolving thing you can take into your body would be like fruit juice. That would be like very, very dissolving to the waste in your body. So it's a very, very aggressive level of fasting and it can be very intense if your body is in a really extreme state of acidosis um <clears throat> so then after that you would have um dried fruit or not sorry dried fruit um like whole fruit would be like very dissolving it's like very juicy um fruit would be um very dissolving but not as aggressive as fruit juice where the where the fiber has been taken out and then after that would be maybe like dried fruit and then after that would be like cooked fruit so fruit all falls into the mucus list category that dissolves waste but cooked fruit is less aggressive than the raw uh, fruit juice or uh, whole fruit so that is fruit and then when it comes to the vegetables um, raw vegetables that are like leafy greens and that don't have any starch in them whatsoever um, are going to be really good for like mechanically moving waste out but even better than that is if you add like something heavier like cabbage or carrots um, if you cook the cabbage or if you um, cook like some broccoli or something like that and also have it with a big raw salad that's m mainly made up of like uh, greens then that's going to mechanically be able to start moving waste out of your system out of your colon and this is really good if you're starting to like get into dissolving a little bit of waste but you have like a very acidic state the um the salads really help to actually like kind of sop up a lot of the poison that are trying to come out of your body and prevent it from like recirculating in your system. So they're very important for the transition diet um, to focus on these two categories the most when you're trying to heal or dissolve waste or kind of move backwards from a really intense state of acidosis. You focus on the foods that are going to dissolve waste and then you kind of choose within that realm like how aggressive you want to be with it. You don't have to do it the same every day. You can like switch off. Um, you can do whatever you need to. Um, if you can only handle cooked fruit, then just go with that um, for a while until you're able to like incorporate more raw fruit. I'm at a place in my journey because I've been transitioning for so long, um, for like 12 years, that I'm able to handle raw fruit juice like no problem, not having like really intense symptoms at this point in my journey. Like that could change. Like sometimes you get so clean, actually not sometimes, I hear this story a lot, that you get so cleaned out that you can't even do long fasting anymore. You can't do any kind of fasting. Um, if you just try to be mucusless, you just have like, these really extreme detox symptoms and everything. So I'm at a place right now where I'm like needing to focus on the more dissolving waste side of things. But you might be in a different state. Like doing a juice fast where you're at now might be so uncomfortable and create such intense detox symptoms that um, you just want to get off of it. You know, you want to go back to the way you were before. So that brings me to the elimination, understanding how your body's eliminating things and what symptoms come up when you're eliminating and and how to like kind of work with that process. So if you want to start with the Muse Diet Healing System and uh, you haven't read the book yet, my first suggestion would be look at what you're eating and look at how you're eating. Um, are you eating the Santa Maria diet? You know, are you still eating a lot of pus forming foods? Um, <clears throat> if you're doing that, I wouldn't recommend going straight into fruit. You would be having a very, very intense extreme reaction if you just go straight into eating a lot of fruit. Um, I would focus more on neutralizing the acidity in the body by having a lot more salads and having a lot more um, veggies. 
and also doing the mucus lean things like um, still eating mucus forming foods. Um, as long as you're having them with a big salad, you're going to be able to eliminate them better and they're going to be able to help with that process of mechanically moving waste out of the system. So you can start there. Um, let's say, you know, you are coming from the standard American diet and you also wake up as soon as you wake up in the morning and you eat something pus forming, like you immediately wake up and eat like bacon and eggs. If you're coming from that extreme level, um, I would say the first step would probably just to be wait like two hours to eat <laughs> and just see how you feel in that two hours. If you're drinking a lot of coffee, you know, um, just see what it's like if you just try to go a day without coffee. What kind of extreme symptoms are you having in that, in that time? You, what you might notice, I used to be very addicted to coffee, so I know what this is like. <laughs> Coffee is very addictive. When you don't have it, you feel weak, you feel tired, you get headaches. Um, you just feel like your brain isn't working, you know, because you've been, you've been propped up on all this really intense stimulation. And it's so acidic that it kind of matches the acidity in your body and keeps things moving in that direction of like more and more acidity. So um, when you take it out, you actually start feeling all this acidic waste start recirculating in your system. And that's what causes all those symptoms that you're experiencing. This is one of the most important concepts to understand from the book is like, what is actually causing your symptoms and what's really going on there? It's really just your body trying to eliminate waste. That's it. If you can help your body on that process of eliminating waste, then you're not going to experience, you know, those extreme detox symptoms there are ways for you to handle that waste in ways that are much more comfortable than just like forcing yourself so it's just like quick cold turkey so he has suggestions in the book for how to like get off of stimulants and caffeine and stuff like that like which drinks you can switch to um, over time he didn't have access to the kind of juices we have now so you, he didn't really have like green juice but i would recommend if you're coming from a very very acidic state to like start by having a lot of greens and salad like incorporating those into your life and trying what, what you can to get off the pus forming foods um, try to go more towards plant-based and vegan and incorporating more salads. That would be a good place to start and um, just see what happens. Like I said, if you just try to fast two hours in the morning, just like pay attention to your symptoms and just see if you can like start delaying when you first start eating and then making the first thing that you eat some fruit or a salad. You know, if you still need to get the salads in before you start having any fruit in the day, um, just try that first. Just start with that and see how that goes. So that would be like some suggestions for where to start if you're coming from that. If you're coming from already eating pretty healthy, like you already have been eating like vegan, plant-based for a long time, like I, how I was, you might be able to start out being more aggressive with your transition. Like you might be able to just, you know, have like a mono fruit meal, like a raw fruit. Like if you already eat a lot of raw fruit, you don't have any issues with it. You can just like make fruit your first meal. If you've been having like oatmeal in the morning or even having um, something like mucus forming as your first meal, just try to switch that out for something that's just fruit-based. And even still, you can start with like, you know, like a smoothie bowl or like a smoothie if you don't want to go straight to doing fruit mono meals. That's like bo sounds boring to you or it's not filling enough for you because you just need like a whole lot of fruit at that time to like be satisfied. Try something else, you know, try something that's fruit based. You can just kind of get into that habit of breaking your fast like o overnight, you know, with something um that's actually going to be dissolving the waste more than just completely stopping the elimination. The first thing you eat in the day is something mucus forming. You're stopping the elimination in such a way that your body has to like freak out and like send all the troops to just like deal with the incoming situation. So one of the most important concepts from the book, like I said, to understand is like how elimination works in your body and understanding that concept of like whether you're like helping the elimination along or you're stopping it completely Th those are the choices that you're making in the day. Am I, am I going to be choosing something that's you know going to be dissolving the waste and helping the elimination move along so that I get more of that healing in? Or am I going to choose something that stops it in a way that's comfortable for me, but is still helping to mechanically move the waste out? Or am I putting something in that's creating more waste, that's creating more constipation by eating something mucus forming or pus forming? Um, if I start with those things, you know, what, what what's that really telling my body you know that we're in a state of crisis basically all the time so those are the choices that you have uh when you basically choose what you're going to eat every single day and we can basically start over each day you can decide like oh yeah like i just kind of want to wait for as long as i can before eating you know um the first time i feel hungry maybe i'll just drink something instead of eating something at that time next time i feel hungry then i'll start with some fruit you know, you can just start kind of going in that direction. Again, if you're coming from already eating a lot of fruit and you're already coming from like, already being kind of vegan and plant-based, already kind of like eliminated the pus forming foods out of your diet, then that's a place you can start um, where you can start switching things. So that's what he emphasized in the book is that you don't have to make an extreme change. Like you can kind of um, tailor your own transition onto the transition. Um, however it is that you need, like you can just make small changes here and there. 
he says that for some people the no breakfast plan just like literally skipping breakfast and just having like something liquid could be enough to heal some people's ailments <laughs> just that alone i've been doing that for many many years i basically have only been eating one or two meals a day for a long time so i have a lot of experience with that um i think that's again why it's so easy for me to do this juice fast that i'm doing while i'm probably gonna be able to stay on it for a while um if that's what my body's telling me we can do because my body's not giving me any signals whatsoever right now that i need to come off of this fast <laughs> like it just feels like you know i'm just coasting i've only had one juice today and uh, he says like the less juice you drink on a fast you know the more aggressive the fast is so i'm in a pretty aggressive state of fasting at this point and um i'm not experiencing any detox symptoms i've been doing my lemon enemas every day and that again i do the lemon enemas to help the waste keep moving through so what else did i want to say about how to start he has a book he has a section in the book called the diagnosis and that's a really cool section because he gives you kind of clear instructions on how to like do a test on yourself you can just do a day where you just have fruit you can do two days if you feel like after that first day you want to keep going and seeing what happens you can also do three days he's like so three days doing all fruit is going to be totally safe for you even if you're experiencing a lot of really intense detox symptoms you're getting such valuable information it's it's possible you know to just get so much out of it that you might want to keep going you know after the one or two days and go to the third day um if you eat fruit for three days and you're not experiencing any detox symptoms you're feeling really good then you know that you're in a state where you can actually do potentially some more aggressive cleansing you know you may be able to do a stronger lemon enema like the kinds that i do i do pretty strong lemon enemas and not many people can handle the kind of strength that i do even some practitioners that have been going a while who've been doing this transition for a long time can't do the length the the the, the strength that i can do but that's just where i'm at like i'm a mucus type <laughs> we tend to be able to be able to handle more of the lemon juice in the lemon enemas um and we tend to be able to handle more of the fruit more of the aggressive fruits like the like the grapes and uh, the lemons we can do a lot of that um because our body tends to like deal with the foods that we're putting in by kind of tucking it away away from our organs so our organs tend to be in like pretty good shape if we're catching you know things early enough like i haven't gotten to a, a place where I was degenerating or experiencing like really intense symptoms or like really intense signs of illness. I was doing pretty good, even though mechanically I was still carrying all this excess like weight on me. I wasn't experiencing signals, um, symptoms that would be really, um, what's it called? Like, like made me think that I'm really sick, that I need to like be really careful. Um, so I've, de I've decided to go more aggressive in my own transition where i'm at now that's why i'm doing this juice fast right now but i was also feeling drawn to it before i even found this book and um but if i had read this book and i was in a state where i was extremely experiencing a lot of acidosis i probably wouldn't even think that i needed to do a juice fast i probably would have just stuck with the transition diet and i was doing that i was doing the transition diet type stuff pretty much to the to the to the t as i could you know um i pretty much would just start with like a fruit meal which i already did a lot of anyway and then i would just have like a salad at the end of the day if i wanted something mucus forming i would have it after the salad and, and the mucus forming items i was eating was stuff i was using up so i had some like beans at one point or like some bread here or there just like seeing how different things made me feel and honestly i felt my best when i was just having the fruit and the salad so i'm at that state in my journey where i can do that and feel totally satisfied and feel really good um I'm also really good with just all fruit days. I feel amazing on those days. I wasn't really experiencing any extreme detox symptoms, just a little bit of fatigue. That was it. <laughs> um, I was already feeling a lot of fatigue in my normal life. And that's another reason why for me, it made sense to kind of go to the, to the fasting level that I'm at where I'm doing more of the fruit and more of the dissolving of the waste, the aggressive dissolving of waste. Cause it just felt like for me, I had gotten to a place where I was so constipated that this old waste was ready to come out. It was ready to get dissolved. My body was just waiting for this moment <laughs> to do this um so it feels right for my physiology at this point but honestly if it wasn't feeling right like if i was experiencing really intense symptoms and they weren't going away with the lemon enemas i would just come off the fast and just get into some salads you know i would feel like i got as much dissolving as i needed but my body's not giving me any signals whatsoever that i should be coming off of this fast um because i'm not feeling any like, intense detox symptoms i'm very comfortable um, i'm not experiencing any hunger i'm not thinking about food i don't miss food so it's just not time like this is what my body wants for me to be doing right now and it feels really good so what else can i share about how to get started um yeah i think just kind of keep in mind mentally that 
no matter where you're at now, like if you have in your mind that you want to move towards eating more fruits and vegetables, that's really the uh, direction you want to be going in. You know, however you end up getting there, however you end up structuring your own transition, whatever resonates for you, you'll find what resonates with you as you go along. But this resource here, this book, it, for me has been invaluable given all the other things that I've tried, <laughs> being vegan and plant-based for a long time and not getting the full healing that I knew was possible. I wasn't able to like fully heal my body. I was able to like kind of stop the worst of it. I stopped wor putting the worst foods in my body, but I was still putting in foods that were kind of like still clogging me up, still constipating me and uh, weren't allowing me to like fully release all the old stagnant waste that wanted to come out. And now it's all coming out on this juice fast, you know, not all of it, but you know, um, I'm getting some good dissolving in. So that's how you can kind of structure the beginning of your transition is trying to figure out what's most important to you at this point. Is it dissolving waste or is it neutralizing waste and acidity? Um, do you just want to like feel more comfortable being able to eat more fruit, being able to eat more vegetables? Is that a struggle for you at this point? Um, then you need then then you kind of know where to start with your transition given the things that I've said in this video and from reading the book you'll be able to kind of like clue into the kind of suggestions that he gives for what you're doing what, what you need to be doing um, at your stage in your journey to get the kind of results that you want to get so I hope that's helpful um, again this video is just so long I can't talk about this without just talking forever so um, I think I'm actually gonna upload this one <laughs> so thank you so much for watching um, please like share comment and subscribe if you like these kind of videos where I'm just kind of talking at the camera, um, more so than the vlogs, check out my other channel, which is Simone's Ascendant. That's actually my first YouTube channel. And um, this was basically this, the whole channel is basically just me talking to the camera. camera. So um, I'm still going to be doing those kind of videos, just maybe um, talking more about like other things in my life, more so than just um, this juice fast and this transition. So anyway, um, take care. I'll talk to you later. Bye.